In the ever-expanding game of fast food, the giants of the world are constantly throwing things at the wall to see what sticks, and with their menus ever-expanding, sometimes they run out of room and they have to discontinue some of our favorites. We're going to count down some of those favorites and see which ones we miss and see which ones we're glad are gone. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and hit the little bell notification so you don't miss anything. At number 10, we have the Triple Decaroni by Pizza Hut. In 1997, Pizza Hut introduced the Triple Decaroni. It's basically crust, cheese, sauce, meat on top of crust, meat, sauce, and cheese. It's basically a double-decker pizza. Wow! What a pizza! So I don't know why they called it a triple decaroni. Pizza Hut, that ain't how triple and double, you do math wrong. And despite it being just basically two pizzas for the price of one, it didn't sell well and it only lasted one year. They tried again, they tried to rebrand it in the year 2000, but nobody wanted that shit. At number nine, we have the Quesarito by Taco Bell. The simple but beautiful Quesarito was a staple of Taco Bell's menu. It was just a tortilla, cheese, onions, and the pizza sauce that normally came on the Mexican pizza. But when Taco Bell decided to get rid of the Mexican pizza, they no longer had that sauce, so they also had to get rid of the cheesy Quesarito. Taco Bell is just one of those places where they re- do the same five or six ingredients and call it a new item. So when one of those few and far in between unique items go away, it, it just messes everything up. It just screws up their whole ecosystem. At number eight, we have KFC potato wedges. KFC, for as long as we've all known them, had potato wedges in a world full of french fries. They were a unique outlier to the game. But in 2019, KFC made the monumental decision to get rid of the wedges and introduce fries. In their 60 year history, KFC was a part of the fry game, like every other fast food joint out here. Me personally, I was disappointed. Potato wedges were a very welcomed change of pace from the fries that you can get anywhere. Even if it's a curly fry or a waffle fry, it's still just a fry. Sometimes you want a little bit more of a, of a oomph, a little bit more girth in your potato experience. And KFC used to give us that, but they took them away from us. At number seven, we have the Taco Bell Waffle Taco. In 2014, Taco Bell decided that they wanted to get into the breakfast game, and they released a slurry of breakfast items, including their waffle taco. Now, it's as basic as it seems. It's just a waffle, sausage, egg, cheese, a little bit of sauce, curled up into the vague shape of a taco. Now, you think, what could go wrong? It's just breakfast food wrapped up, but people weren't feeling it. After a year on the menu, Taco Bell decided to discontinue it because of the poor sales. Sometimes you just gotta stick to what you know. Taco Bell, stop trying shit. At number six, we have the Szechuan sauce from McDonald's. In 1998, McDonald's released its Szechuan sauce in collaboration in promoting the new Disney film Mulan at the time. In honor of Disney's new movie Mulan, McDonald's is offering tender crispy chicken McNuggets and a new Szechuan sauce. It was like a, almost like a teriyaki kind of a sauce with a little bit of like, like soy and like chili peppers. It was like sweet and sticky and sour. It was really good. But then it was discontinued with the promotion until 2017 when the popular cartoon Rick and Morty made like a passing reference to it, right? But then that just sparked all of this interest and McDonald's put that old noodle to work and re-released the Szechuan sauce with a Rick and Morty promotion and people lost their 
shit. People were camping outside of McDonald's for a taste of the sauce. People were selling the sauce online for hundreds and thousands of dollars. People were getting in fistfights and rioting over this damn sauce. And people to this day, you can look and find it online now for egregious amounts of money. You'd be surprised how stir crazy people get over some sweet and sour sauce. At number five, we have the Taco Bell Mexican Pizza. In 1985, Pizza Hut released this pizza, which was basically a tostada with the beef and the refried beans, and then another tostada with the tomatoes, cheese, and uh, their little pizza sauce. Now, this was a staple for two decades on their menu until 2020 when Taco Bell decided to let the pizza go for numerous reasons on top of the special packaging for this pizza alone created over 7 million pounds of waste per year. That is 7 million pounds of waste for one menu item annually. That's crazy. Uh, maybe, maybe it was for the greater good. At number four, we have McDonald's fries. I know what you're thinking. McDonald's fries haven't gone anywhere. Well, they've changed. McDonald's fries used to be fried in beef tallow, cow fat, and they gave them a very distinct and buttery flavor. They made them fucking immaculate, honestly. But then in 1999, after people started to get super health conscious and worry about trans fats, cholesterol, things like that, McDonald's switched to frying their fries in a different oil. They replaced the beef tallow with 100% vegetable oil, which resulted in fries with 0% cholesterol, 45% less fat, and it also uh, lowered their stock value because people were pissed and stopped eating there altogether. At number three, we have McDonald's again, but this time they're fried apple pies. Now we all love their apple pies, right? They're flaky, they're golden brown, they're damn near delectable, but they used to be a little bit more naughty, if you will. They used to be fried, crispy, a little bit more golden, a little bit more texture, a little bit of crunch. Oh my God, I remember them, and I was only like three at the time. But in the same vein as their fries, McDonald's got on their health kick. Health kick, it's still McDonald's. But in 1992, they decided to switch them over to being a baked apple pie to get rid of all those trans fats, the oil, the cholesterol, the calories, at least a few of the calories. But there is one place in the United States that you can still get an original fried apple pie at McDonald's, and that place is Hawaii. If you go to a McDonald's in Hawaii, they will serve you up a deep fried apple pie with no questions asked. Hawaii does not give a fuck. We like Hawaii. At number two, we have McDonald's. McDonald's again with their Mighty Wings. In 2014, McDonald's released their Mighty Wings, deep fried, crispy, battered, bone-in chicken wings. Now, it seems like a odd thing for a fast food spot to do chicken wings, but let's keep in mind how Taco Bell recently proved everyone wrong and got the chicken wing game correct. But unfortunately, McDonald's did not share in the same success. These experienced extremely poor sales to the point where they slashed the price just to get rid of the extra stock and they never looked back and that's just sad it could have been something special now before we get to number one i just want to ask you if you've liked what you've seen so far go ahead and make sure if you haven't already hit the subscribe button leave a nice little comment hit the little like button it means a lot to me it helps the channel out a whole lot and it makes sure that i'll know that you want me to come back and make more of these videos. Now at number one, we have the KFC Double Down. I personally remember this. The year was 2010 and I was walking home from work and I was passing KFC and I saw this sign and it said, try our new Double Down sandwich. And I looked at the sign, it had a picture of the sandwich on there and I'm like, I don't see any bread. This is a sandwich and I don't see any bread on it. And two pieces of chicken. So long. Fun. The two fried chicken breasts 
We're the bread and the sandwich. It sounds like a fever dream, don't it? It's one of those things where people were either amazed by it, like my fat ass was, or they were absolutely disgusted. They, they, they thought this was the end of the world as far as we know it. And apparently this started off as kind of an experiment. This was gonna be like only a few months of a thing. It came out on April Fool's Day actually, um, kind of as a joke until a month later, KFC realized they sold over 10 million units. Let me drive that home. They sold 10 million sandwiches in one month. They thought this was gonna be a joke. This wasn't a joke. Today's the day. I double down. The KFC but then the excitement deflated once word got spread about exactly how many calories was in this. And the sodium alone will take your breath away. This sandwich had 1,328 milligrams of sodium per sandwich. And just to put that into perspective, we're only supposed to have 1,500 grams of sodium per day. So that is like what 90% of your sodium intake with just one sandwich. So they got rid of it here. They got rid of it here. You can still get it overseas anytime you want because the people overseas, they don't live in excess as we do in America. Not everything is just so indulgent so they can afford every once in a while to just have a double down or something like that because everything else they're doing right over here. We like chocolate covered potato chips and we like bacon flavored soda. So we can't have too many nice things. I might have to cover those in another video. So folks, that is it. I appreciate you joining me on this ride. Please make sure you join me in the future for more lists, more breakdowns, more countdowns, more food review contents. Um, go ahead and hit some stuff you see floating around me. Um, some more fun stuff, if you will. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you soon.